Let's start with the LC because uh, that car made its debut last year, uh, and even earlier than that. We got to drive it last year. Beautiful, long, low, sporty coupe. Uh, talk about the, the placement in the market for that car. You know, that's that's a bit of a unique mm. uh, concept—a luxurious, sporty coupe. Right. So. The LC for us uh, fills a gap that we had not previously occupied. Um, you know, when you think about where Lexus was maybe when we began, we were probably recognized for quality and dependability and, and certainly premier customer care, but um, maybe not so much for beautiful styling and high performance. So with the LC, uh, maybe preceded by the RCF and GSF, yeah. we now have an absolutely beautiful performance coupe with a five liter V8, 471 horsepower. So. <laughs> We are so excited to get this into the hands of our dealers this May. And when we first saw that car, it was presented as a concept car. Uh, and we thought, oh, this looks like a concept car. But it really didn't change much at all going from that to production. It's rare that we see something stay that true. It's almost as if you were at our national dealer meeting because when we did show that, he, uh, actually here in Detroit, I think 2012 as a concept, mm -hmm. and then we shared it with our dealers uh, you know, over the last several months, we played up the fact that it looks almost identical to what the concept was to what the actual production vehicle is. So um, we just couldn't be more pleased with what the designers and engineers were able to uh, pull off. And that, that's very, very rare. I mean, we do see concept cars move to production, and they look similar, but usually there are at least very subtle tweaks that just kind of take the edge off, and this looks absolutely fantastic. It's Thank probably uh, one of the most gorgeous cars on the road, for sure, and we were lucky enough to drive it toward the end of last year, and uh, it's phenomenal driving as well. Now, interestingly, there is the big V8, as you mentioned, but there's also a hybrid version of that, and we won't delve into the details, but that's got a very high-tech, very trick powertrain in there. Can you tell me a little bit about the buyer of that car and who would go for the V8 versus who would go for the hybrid version? So I think internally we're still trying to get a read on what that product mix should be between the normally aspirated and the hybrid vehicle. I think we're estimating, you know, 10, 15 percent of, uh, of the mix will be hybrid. Okay, so fairly small. Fairly small, although interestingly at our long lead press preview over in Spain, a lot of the journalists and folks with the media suggested that depending on the pricing, um, you may have uh, something that even takes the place of, of the normally aspirated uh, engine. So. I think going in when we launch this vehicle, um, we'll probably begin with that 10 to 10 to 15% range. Um, and, uh, and now that we have final pricing, which is about a $3,500 premium, that feels about right to us, but we'll see how the market accepts it. And that's not really that much because we're talking about a 90 some thousand dollar car, right? What's the starting price on, on the other Right, so the, the hybrid is $96,510 and the five liter V8 is 92,000. So that's a 3% increase or thereabouts. So that, that's not that much for, for what is, again, a very, very interesting powertrain, a very complex powertrain, and uh, you know, very progressive in terms of technology as well. But uh, I was asking around some folks on the staff uh, the, what they want to know about the, the car. And so the, the big question was, when might we see an F version of that? Or might we see an F version of that? You know, a really, really hard edged, uh, high performance version of that car. See, that's a really, really good question. <laughs> but you know, if I were to answer that definitively, uh -huh. I would be in real trouble <laughs> um, you know, with uh, the folks above me. But I will tell you that in terms of the kind of questions that we get from our dealers who mm -hmm. are most close to the marketplace, mm -hmm. they would also love to see an F version because they, they know what uh, they've seen in the GSF and the RCF. And that engine that's in the LC is that same GSF and RCF engine. So their expectation is for an LCF, mm -hmm. but nothing that we can announce today. Fair enough. And you mentioned dealers a lot. When might we see this car actually in dealers? In May. May. Okay. So it's not far off at this point. Yeah, so just a few more months. So get your orders in, I guess, would be the lesson. Yeah, there. if you'd like to, we can help you out that way. Uh, maybe we'll talk after this, and we okay. might need a bit of a loan now <laughs> okay. to make that happen, though. Uh, so the other car, obviously, is the LS. Big, big, big launch. Very, very important car. Kind of the car that, that launched the company, more or less. Tell me about some of the big innovations that this car brings forward. I guess starting with the design, it's a very aggressive design for the car. So again, I mean, if, if you think about the design of our products going back to the very beginning, which, as you say, Tim, was uh, had begun with the LS, I, you know, it was probably traditional, um, <laughs> yeah. which understated, perhaps. understated. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, as the luxury buyers have become um, maybe more millennials or into the luxury mm -hmm. space and fewer folks like myself, which are baby boomers, it's just a fact of the data. Right. So sure. we don't ever want to distance ourselves from from baby boomers. We still need to make sure we take great care of them, but we felt we needed to get very aggressive with our styling, even in a prestige luxury sedan mm -hmm. like the LS. So um, it's on the same architecture as the LC. It will have some of the uh, similar driving characteristics and uh, handling 
uh, characteristics as the LC. So all of that, um, we hope, will really set it up well for a much lower average age. And not only progressive styling, but also a lot of interesting technology. Things like a 24-inch heads-up display. I think that's the largest heads-up display we've seen in a production car. And that's pretty exciting as well to have uh, you know, almost a full field of view at that point. Um, I is the buyer of a car like this really looking for the cutting edge, the latest and greatest technology and that kind of thing? Well, again, I think it gets back toward um, providing features and benefits that may not typically be expected in a Prestige luxury sedan. Mm -hmm. Um, you're right, it is the largest heads-up color display in the, in the industry. Um, but I would tell you that our anticipated mix is probably 10 to 15% going in. If the market embraces it beyond that, we can certainly take it up from there. But um, yeah, that was exciting for us to reveal that yesterday. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, if I can get a little bit stereotypical here, the Lexus buyer in general, I think, is looking for a little bit more technology, a little bit more cutting edge, and a little bit more, you know, I think that Japanese feel, which is definitely a little bit more focused on the high technology uh, side of things. You know, as a long-time Toyota fan and mm. fan of Lexus cars as well, I think I can appreciate that too. So what other innovations is this bringing? You know, how does this differentiate itself from the Mercedes-Benz, from the BMW, and from the other cars that are in that segment? So, you know, as I look at that LS, our fifth-generation LS, I don't know that there's one bolt on that vehicle that's carried over from the prior generation LS. So completely new vehicle from the ground up. Um, you know, as you go inside uh, from a technology standpoint, it now has the world's first uh, active steering pedestrian detection system. So for example, um, you know, if a pedestrian starts to walk in front of the vehicle, the car will begin to brake and actually steer away from the pedestrian and still stay in the lane. So. Um, we're very excited to announce that world's first. And then probably, um, in addition to that, the fact that the engine is a V6 twin turbo mm -hmm. is, is for us um, newsworthy, specifically from the perspective that the zero to 60 is 4.5 seconds. So certainly within the same, leagues, same league as all of its V8 competitors. I was actually surprised that we didn't see the hybrid version from VLC uh, mentioned as part of the LS. Is that something maybe we can expect down the road? See, there's another really good future question. I like that. I, to ask those I really know good you're questions. really good. <laughs> you're really good at asking those questions. Um, uh, you know, I, I, I hate not uh, responding definitively to a question sure. that I know your your listeners and uh, viewers are probably looking for, but I just can't go there today. But thanks for asking. <laughs> and how does that car continue to to to? have a strong place in the market as we see more and more yep. buyers moving to larger cars, yep. taller cars. Uh, you know, there's some interesting features about this car that will make it maybe a little bit more amenable to someone who is thinking about an SUV. But how do you target that buyer who's maybe thinking about it and keep them in the sedan, in the sedan yeah. style yeah. of things? So, I mean, everyone understands how the general market and the luxury industry has migrated from sedans to SUVs. And that certainly has been the case with Lexus. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you, though, in the luxury space that, that we compete in, um, many luxury homes have not just a utility vehicle, but also a sedan. Mm. And so um, we're very confident, not only is this our prestige halo luxury sedan, mm. but it should certainly fill into that garage space in a luxury home, you know, we think really well. And with the more aggressive styling and the powertrain and so forth, um, we do believe it's going to bring, the, um, bring new buyers into the brand that might not otherwise have considered a, a Lexus prestige LS. All right, well, uh, both great-looking cars, LC and LS. I I'm looking forward to seeing more of them on the road this year. 